Hello and welcome to Avalon Priestess TV, the show where every week we deepen into a different bit of Avalon to bring it to our lives. Yum, 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 yum. And this is new. This is a new thing I'm supposed to be doing on Mondays, but I was too scared to do it yesterday, so I'm doing it today. So, my excitement about this new weekly live that I'm hoping to do is that we're just going to be talking about Avalon. We're talking about everything we love about Avalon and about priestessing. Because for me, Avalon holds that essence of practical priestessing. Avalon is a place that is really based and founded on community and being there for the world. I mean, that's my very grounded view of Avalon and that's how I work with it in my mystery school, which I think is a bit different to how other people work with Avalon. So I wanted to have the opportunity to talk about all the things we love, to talk about history, to talk about herbology, to talk about legends, to talk about the goddesses of Avalon, the gods of Avalon, um, the ancient Celtic world, the ways in which we can rebirth that Celtic spirit in the new world, and what are the cool books and stuff that I am reading and researching in right now for my classes and things. So today I really want to talk about Morgan Le Fay, oh big surprise, as the goddess of Avalon, because she's, from my view on this stuff, she's very, very pivotal to all things Avalon. So, in the old Arthurian stories, which in themselves are a legacy of older folk tales and mythology of the British people, the ancient British people, we have this character of Morgan Le Fay, and she's known to all of us, I expect, as a powerful sorceress and witch, and often an antagonist in the Arthurian stories, but whatever happens, she's a big important deal, and we find it very exciting and interesting. And when we talk about Morgan Le Fay and we look back in the medieval stories, which are the first time these things were written down. So in ancient Celtic world, we don't have a lot of information on the mythology and the religion of the ancient Celtic people of the British Isles because they didn't record their stories in writing. They didn't have a writing -y culture. They had an oral storytelling culture. Lucky for us in Ireland, the storytelling class of people, the Druids, kind of, they put themselves and fit themselves in the Christian cleric world without huge amounts of issues. So we still have a lot of their surviving stories that the old storytelling Druids, I believe, wrote down or the sons and daughters of the storytelling droids wrote down when they became clerics. But in Britain, we don't have the same. So we have these Arthurian stories, which are, I believe, the legacy of the great heroes and myths of the time before, before Christianizing England. That's what we have. We have Arthur, the sun god. We have Morgan Le Fay, the moon goddess. And we have all these very, um, sly shifting stories of how these people who are depicted as humans are also playing out a mythic story okay so when we're thinking about Morgan Le Fay she is very pivotal in our understanding or very pivotal to help us understand Avalon in my beliefs she is magical and she is otherworldly and she flits between. Sometimes she appears in stories as a fairy queen who comes through to offer sovereignty to the most worthy knight or fella at court. Sometimes she comes through to challenge the knights at court because they're not actually living up to their, their ideals. She holds this magic and she is here in this world but also not. And she is very very powerful. She's a prophetess, she's a magician, she is a royal woman and this is a powerful link back to her role as the Queen of Avalon which is alluded to in the earliest stories we have about Morgan Le Fay and in the folk stories from across Europe that talk about her kind of in a vague sense and are pulling on that ancestry of hers that is the sovereign fairy queen who grants sovereignty. Morgan Le Fay really helps us get into Avalon because she embodies so much of what Avalon 
means to us. She's the queen of Avalon, of course she does. Avalon is a healing isle and she is always known as a great, great, great healer. Avalon is an isle of magic and dreams and she's a powerful sorceress. Avalon is often described as an island of women or of communities or of happiness and people coming together. And Morgan Le Fay is somebody who always works within a sisterhood. In the earliest stories of Morgan Le Fay, she is one of nine queens and they work together to rule Avalon. And even in the later stories of Morgan Le Fay, when she's turned into a bit of a baddie, you often find her chilling with her posse of enchantresses, like making mischief together and bickering about stuff. So she loves being in groups of women, does Morgan Le Fay. She is also a, um, oh, she is also holding that energy of the great goddess. She is one of the threads from the ancient Celtic otherworld, which holds that deep feminine visionary energy. And it is a deeply feminine world. She holds that rhythm of the moon. She holds the power of the earth and that connection with Avalon is a deeper resonance of the earth that we live on now. So for me, in my school, Morgan Le Fay is our path to Avalon. She's how we get there. And we use her story as an inspiration of how we can show up and be good priestesses of Avalon in the modern day world. We take our inspiration from her and her sorcery and her passion and her drive to really get on what it is that we desire to create in our own kingdoms. She is a queen, her whole thing is about power. Everyone was very uncomfortable with all that wily sexuality and really brazen power back in the medieval times. We're really embracing that power now in the 21st century as women and non-binary folk are rising up to claim their place and take power. How different would the world be if more women, trans, non-binary people were in places of power? And Morgan Le Fay is a shapeshifter. She holds that edge of being one thing and being the opposite thing and being neither things in between. Morgan Le Fay shows us how to really connect with our desires and balance that edge of being a sister, being a sibling and working for the community, which is very, very important, but she balances that edge with what she needs and what she desires and what her dreams are. So she's kind of that balance of like selfishness and um, gracious community mindedness. And she really shows us how to embody these aspects. When we invoke her, she really calls herself in and she helps us grow to get to these places because her other aspect is as a dark goddess. She is someone who can see all your shadow nonsense and all the lies you tell yourself and all the things you're trying very hard not to think about or deal with and she helps you deal with it. She helps you get through it so then you can uncover that missing part of yourself that you needed that you lost in that shadow nonsense. Mm -hmm. And this really relates to this part of Avalon that isn't just the beautiful heavenly realm of priestesses and like wet dreams of new age ladies who have read the mist of Avalon. She holds this edge of Avalon as the Isle of the Ancestors, Avalon as the Isle of the Dead, and Avalon as being somewhere you go on a great otherworld initiatory journey to either step into your power as a poet, like Talia Sin and Merlin, or turn into a crazy madman, like, um, yeah, or just turn into a crazy madman, like many books that you will end up finding in Glastonbury if you wander around the town too late at night. Mm -hmm. So she holds those edges as well. And for us, she's a really brilliant guide to keep us grounded and to keep us focused on our journey to connect with Avalon. So that's why I work with Morgan Le Fay. Um, I'm just a bit obsessed with her. I like her a lot. And why she's so helpful and important for us to get to know and connect with Avalon. If you work with Morgan Le Fay, do you work with Morgan Le Fay? Do you work with Avalon? How do you connect in with Avalon? Do you use a goddess to get there? Do you work with Avalon as a concept? Please do tell me in the comments below. I would love to hear from you and see all the different perspectives because in Avalon, there's never just one person's perspective. We pull from the collective and we really listen to the 
words of all of our sister queens, sister siblings, sister kings to bring it all together. So thank you so much for listening and coming to join me on Avalon Priestess TV. If you want to learn more about Avalon, um, I'll pop a link below where you can sign up for my seven Priestess Arts of Avalon free guide, which is this unbelievably beautiful free guide that really hones you in on the core concepts and traits and values of Avalon so you can be inspired in your practice. I'm sending you so much love and I'll speak to you soon. Bye!